going on? Greetings, Stove the Hobo. It's on. It's Valentine's Day tonight. And all I can say is I'm definitely single and I'm excited about it because I'm free, free to not care about my appearance. I mean, I look ugly and gross right now and I don't care. I got this silly jacket from the thrift store, which it's five bucks. Basically, I'm gonna jettison it at some point. Here we are. This was fast right after I got here. I'm on the engine. We're out of here. So I got some cold beer. This is the new Voodoo Ranger IPA from New Belgium. Pretty decent. I don't really know its example why it's any different than any other IPA, but it tastes good. So you, you who's watching this, you should be pleased because this stuff in the engine, this is not ever going to be public anymore. This is playing with fire a little bit more being in here. I've rode in the engine a lot of times. I don't want people to be inspired to go do this. I don't want this to be public. It just shouldn't be done. That's nothing to worry about, that beeping sound. Basically, you if you're watching this, you got access privileges and you should do. Please for being a supporter. So we got quite a trip planned. The goal is to get all the way to the south tip of Florida from Montana. That's pretty much as far as you can do. This is gonna be a long grind of a trip. But I'm starting out in DPUs, which are warm. I should be able to ride DPUs, hopefully as far as Kansas City. I'm on a cool empty. These go to mines well, well before Kansas City. However, I can switch to another train in uh, Laurel or Sheridan. It's Valentine's Day. I just gotta say, I mean, that's nice if you've got a special somebody that's really sweet and that's touching and all that stuff. I just gotta say, though, this year I'm kinda glad I'm single because I can do this trip. It's gonna be a major trip. I and mean, I just gotta say, this is impossible. You get that special someone, you're not, you're not gonna go ride a train down to Florida. It's never gonna happen. Going past the yard office here. I'd like to point out, this yard has got more security than a lot of the class one railroads. They got more fences, they got more things. You gotta really be paying attention to this yard. Looks like, I think we're out of here. Until we clear the yard, I'm not sure this thing isn't gonna get checked to be honest. I got everything down here, ready to pop in in case we stop to do the inspection. I feel like such an outlaw. I think, it, I think it needs to be said, I only have positive energy towards the railroad, towards all the people. There's nothing negative going on here. 11 miles an hour. Coming to the topic of fan funding, look at this camera. It doesn't even focus anymore, it used to. I'm gonna have to buy a new camera. So, that costs money. But you're watching this, you've already helped. I'm not pitching. This is the Kettle House Brewery building. It's a great place to hang out and drink beer and watch trains. Just a little addendum as we're approaching the east end of the yard. There's Missoula. Not going to be back here for quite a while. You can hear the sound of that diesel engine revving up. We are out of here. Look at that pool. I wouldn't mind being in there with a, a hot day tonight, honestly, instead of here. But We're out of here. I'm thinking this calls for another cold beer. I just ran out of beer, but I've got Mike's hard blood orange flavor, and I got goldfish. A little bit later, uh, just cruising through Montana, there's not much, we're missing some of the good scenery. And it's dark, but I really wanted to get out of town in the dark. Uh, the, the train is approaching Bozeman, which is Montana State University, a couple other things there. 
I'm glad to be in here in the in the in the warmth. It is it is not fun for me honestly to be doing this outdoors in the winter anymore and I'm hoping by the time I have to get outside on a train for a while it's gonna be further south. Wake it up here, it's about seven and it's still pretty dark here. This is going over Bozeman Pass. So we're going over Bozeman Pass and we're coming into Livingston. The movie A River Runs Through It uh, is supposed to be in Livingston. It wasn't actually filmed there for whatever reason with Brad Pitt. And uh, that's about 10 miles from here. And this is about the edge of the Montana mountains. After this pass, it's gonna flatten out. And that's it, pretty much. All right, this is Bozeman Pass. This is the end of the mountains here. Out into the flats, no more mountains at all from here east. It's always kind of a you know, sad thought to be leaving the mountains for good and out into the flats, because once you get out of here, it's flat. Basically, as far as you can get in the United States until, you know, Tennessee at least. I can get the wipers here to get a little better view out the window. There we go. Look at that. Looks like it's out of fluid though. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nice. some of the accommodations that you've got here uh, amenities type things in these engines <clears throat> first of all you got the heat that's pretty straightforward you got a power outlet here so I can put my camera on there or cell phone or something look at the controls it's not a terribly complicated looking setup I don't really know how it all works then you've got all this throttles and dynamic brake. Got a radio, and if you know the channel, which I do, you know what to listen. It's really good to know that channel if you're in here because if there's any heads up about a rider in here, you're gonna hear it on there first. And you'll be able to get a jump on anyone who's trying to come and roust you out of here. So got a fridge, you put some cold beer in there. Or in this case, it's just got water. And then you got a bathroom, which you've seen before in other episodes. It's a good way to get through any kind of security area if you're in here. And maybe that sounds counterintuitive because it's kind of a more secure thing here. But, you know, if you're down here on the floor, I mean, no one's ever going to be able to know you're in here as long as you're moving. The phone, just could, this is just connected to the, the radio up here. It's not a phone. I'm enjoying probably my favorite cheap food out here on the road. Chef Boyardee ravioli for breakfast. Got these heaters and you can put the ravioli in Heat it up there. It takes a long time, and I'm hungry, so I'm just gonna dig in. This ravioli would probably be froze solid if we were outside right now. Going past this big old stockyard here. Look at all them cows just hanging out. Got their thick winter coats on. There's doggies out there in this pasture. Finally out of the mountains and into the flats. The train is coming into Laurel. 
and there is where the DPU inspection could happen. And I'm going to be prepared to duck and cover. I'm hoping it's in a place where I could just get off the train and be out of the train when it happens. So it's, I'm not sure what's going to happen when, that, when we get there. Coming into Laurel here. They recently put this new three or four tracks here for crew changes way out here. That's why I'm hoping I don't have to get off here. It's a major hassle. It's a fairly pleasant stop in the summer. I gotta say now, it looks, you know, still dead and gray from winter. I think they're gonna check here. I'm hoping the train would stop out here. And you could just hide behind a tree or something while they're doing it. I'm gonna get off the train until the thing starts going again down here. came and checked it so I'm back on I'm hoping we're just gonna piece out of here however it may stop somewhere up here and they may check it there but the new crew is on so hopefully that we're out here here's Laurel not much of a town to it near Billings so this is the MRL and BNSF joint owned Laurel yard it's a pretty big yard. You got five directions out of here. You got Helena to the west, and then you've got southbounds to Casper and Denver. You've got eastbounds to Sheridan and, and Lincoln and KC. You've got other eastbounds that go a little further north to Minneapolis. And then you got a northbound to Great Falls as well. And now that I think of it, I think there's somewhere out there, there's a, a branch off to South Dakota too, way far east of here. So it's a lot of oil traffic in and out of here. You got a refinery in Billings. You got, I think there's a refinery on the other side of the yard. It's stopping right by the freaking yard office. I don't... Less and less enjoy this great complete stop. Look at these guys. This is not what I like. Freaking, I don't think they, they care about this. All right, they're walking past. Less I'm interested in these moments here. Look at this, you got this chick here. Right on the ground there, too. You better hope this thing isn't gonna get checked here. All right, we're on the move again here. Just, this is the worst track ever to be stopped on. They come in here by that yard office. I mean, I don't even know. And the cops in this town, they, they're close. This is a small town. Please, let's go, please. Get me out of this spot. Get me out of this spot. There's guys everywhere. We got guys like this in the ATV. All over the place. Okay, we're moving. East edge of the yard here in that bridge. Good place to hang out. And then over here, this here is, goes to Great Falls, this track to the left. And they pull out slow here. That's a great run up there. Not this time of year. Passing through Billings, Montana here. Not much going on in this town, honestly. It's really not even worth stopping in once. It's been a slow trip so far. I've been gone about 18 hours and I'm 300 something miles east. That's why when I talk about losing interest in this, this is, I don't have the, the desire to do this and spend this kind of time much longer. This kind of thing. Who are these guys? Are they That's Billings. Stove the Hobo. I'm getting close to Sheridan and 
I'm deciding right now if I'm gonna stay on the Gillette or, or get off there. Basically, this coal empty here, this is going to the mine district, which is past Gillette a little bit, and then on a fork, this train is gonna fork off and go south there into the mines. Obviously, I don't wanna do that. That doesn't help getting stuck in the mines. So I'm gonna need to switch to a through train that's gonna go past the mine district and down towards Lincoln. That train is the Pasco, Kansas City. That's the one general manifest train a day that runs on here. So at some point I gotta get off. I'm either gonna do Sheridan or Gillette. I've been to both places a ton of times, so I don't care that much. It'll be one or the other, and then hopefully I can get the Pasco, Kansas City train and stay on it to Kansas City. That's my intention. That's if it's not too slow. If it really takes its time, I may have to get off somewhere on the line to get more supplies. But the goal is gonna be one stop here and then another train all the way into KC. As you approach Sheridan, this is the Bighorn Mountain Range here, which is one of the more interesting ranges. It just kind of pops up in the middle of Wyoming. It's very remote wilderness back in here. Incredible amounts of snow up in the Bighorn Range right now. I'm gonna get off in Sheridan. I don't know who that guy is driving up there. I thought they were coming to check in here, but he drove right past. Let's get off, maybe get some supplies and get back on another train. Here we are in Sheridan. This is definitely one of those spots where if you don't know the area in advance, you might not know that this is the stop because we're just out here in the countryside still. But the front end of this train is up at the yard office. I'm just gonna wait until something shows up that's going through Gillette and past the fork at Donkey Creek Junction to the mines and get that. Hopefully I can get one or two more and be in KC by Friday is the plan. Today's Wednesday. It'd be really nice if the guy who owns this house happened to be a fan of Stove the Hobo and would let me just post there rather than having to walk in because down here there's an overpass where I can sit and wait. But the reality is that where these DPUs are, all the way back here, I'm gonna have to be back there, which is kind of frustrating. Look at this, this is the same guys from last time, walking under the train car, same place. Interesting, they're not scared. <laughs> Same spot as in that last video I was here. Maybe it's the same ones. Oh, they all look like youngins. None of them look full grown. What's going on? I'm just walking around Sheridan here, <clears throat> looking like a obvious total homeless bum with this outfit on. I just got some more supplies, got some food. Uh, I think it's a good time to you know discuss what it's like being out here on on the road concept, you know? I mean, I'm not, this isn't bad, and I'm not lamenting. I mean, honestly, I think it'd be a lot more fun to stop at a place like this on a road trip. It can get pretty lonely out here. This place right here I was in two years ago. I went in there and I just had my camera out. I just had it out, wasn't pointed at nobody, and these biker guys saw the camera and they flipped. I thought my life was in danger. Two or three guys, black leather vests, surrounding me. What are you doing with that camera? And then they were positive. They were sure that I had already been filming and I opened it up and I'm like, look, there's nothing in here. I, there's nothing, no evidence that I've been recording. Didn't matter, it took about a half hour to get them talked down. There were guys grabbing pool cues. True stories there is. So, Sheridan and Wyoming, I would just say, in my opinion, is, you know, not the most cosmopolitan place and state. You got this nice 
rowdy western looking main street here where I'm sure there were a lot of gunfights and you know hangings in the square and all that stuff back when this was the old west. It's definitely really as old west as you can get. This is probably the most cowboy place here. The mint bar. There's a lot of guys with cowboy hats on there. I definitely would recommend doing a road trip to Wyoming, wherever you live at some point, and doing Yellowstone. You could stop here, go through the Bighorn Range. It's totally worth it, it's scenic, it's Old West, there's rodeo stuff going on. Oh, look at this, I could have seen Dwight Yoakam if I got here two hours earlier. That's today, February 15th. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you must meet all these people, and you must do this and that. It's not really like that. I look like a genuine homeless guy right now walking around. Honestly, walking around with this hoodie, I kind of feel like Deadpool with the thing on. Just like, you know, I don't really want to show my face wearing this outfit because it just totally comes off like I'm sleeping under a bush, which I am. And then you might think, oh, you could probably meet all kinds of different hot chicks out there and, you know, impress chicks with all these stories, but that's definitely not the case. I think a lot of women just have a natural instinct about guys who like trains, and uh, they're probably right, honestly, in having some suspicion. I mean, the ratio of dudes to chicks who watch Stove the Hobo, it's like 99.5 guys to every one chick. It's basically guaranteed no faster way to turn off a chick than to tell them that you're into trains and then tell them that you go around on cargo trains is pretty much the absolute kiss of death I would say. All right, well, this sums up Sheridan. I'm gonna go get some more beer and I'm hoping that train I heard on the scanner is approaching from the rear. It's time to make tracks. I'd like to make a significant push tomorrow towards KC. I'm interested in seeing where I am in 24 hours. I think I could make it to Lincoln if I got the right train tonight. 